So proof of authority is a system that's a kind of a federated system where people trust, uh, say like uh, government agencies or something, give licenses to a couple of nodes. And those are the nodes which actually get to operate in the blockchain and they take turns signing for things. So the key limitation of proof of authority is that you have to trust the authorizing signatory. So whatever this government agency is, who's giving out the stamps for which nodes are allowed in the blockchain, that entity itself could be corrupt and could give stamps to agencies that don't really deserve them, or it could make sure that a majority of the stamps that it gives out, a majority of the nodes that it authorizes are malicious nodes, which are able to corrupt the blockchain in its own favor. So in comparison with proof of authority, where there's one central authority that actually gives out the licenses or the stamps that each of these nodes need to belong to the network, in proof of participation, we also have a kind of a federation. We have a specific set of nodes that are allowed to create blocks, but the way that nodes are admitted into the registry is completely decentralized and it's completely permissionless. So there is no one entity that sits out there deciding you get to be a node, you get to be a node, you get kicked out, you get kicked out. Whether you get to be a node inside the registry or you get kicked out is all based on decentralized rules that run on the entire network. So no one person gets to decide. So whereas in proof of authority, because there's one central authority that gives the licenses for who gets to operate the nodes, there's always the possibility that the value of the things being transacted on the blockchain are greater than the cost that it would take to corrupt the license issuing authority. So maybe it's a government agency that can be bribed or something like this. There could be some kind of scheme that people can derive, which would allow them to defraud the, uh, the network, you know, to, to go and offer millions of dollars to this agency that gives the licenses to run the nodes. Uh, with proof of participation, this centralized bottleneck, this person that you would go and find and bribe them, does not exist. And so uh, the only way for somebody to take over the power to rewrite the blockchain is for them to spend all of the time and resources necessary to gradually infiltrate the POP node registry. And uh, we think that's much more difficult the way that we have it designed.